Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, and that's right. Now we are reviewing Night at the Museum 2. I gotta say, because, you know, Night at the Museum 2 was pretty good and a lot of fun, you know, and, you know, because everything that was going on to it, and this time, you know, because, you know, some of the, uh, some of the figures, you know, from the, from the museum in New York are being transferred to the bowels, I guess, you know, of, um, where, like, the the museums in Washington are. Like, the museum in Washington is pretty big, you know, with a lot of sections and buildings, you know what I'm saying? And with the cast of characters, once again, you got Ben Stiller, Ben Stiller as Larry, Robin Williams, Owen Wilson, Ricky Gervais, Steve Coogan, Rami Malek, um, yeah, even Sean Levi, he has a couple of cameos, I guess, in the film. And even his daughter made a, ca made a cameo in the third film. Um, you know, Sacagawea, uh, this time the, th the, th the three old guys, they don't appear in this. They kind of did, but their scene was deleted, you know? You could find it in the deleted scenes. Would've been nice, you know? And, you know, Nick, Nick Daly, of course, uh, in this too, and Dexter. And some of the new characters. You have, of course, um, Amelia, you know, the, f the female pot, the female flight pilot or flyer or whatever, played by Amy Adams. And then there's also... Trying to see. Oh, did I forget to mention? Because even Ben Stiller's mother made a cameo in the in the first one. Like, I guess trying to play the part where you know helping Larry Daly find a job or something. I don't know. Um, let me see. Yeah, and the main antagonist of the second one, ha you know, Ka Man Ra. You know, uh, played by this you know, great actor, Hank, Az Hank Azaria. He's so good in this, you know. I have come back to not Never mind, just give me the tablet. <laughs> I think I could do a decent impression of him, you know, and his character. Then you also have General George... Um, what was his character's name again? Oh, crap. Hold on a second. Played by Bill Hader, so, you know, um, in... Uh, um, I gotta look up the characters. Their full names. Yeah, General George Armstrong, you know, etc. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, so, and the other, uh, oh yeah, the other antagonists in this who join, um, join, uh, join, you know, Hank Azaria, his character. One is like a black and white gangster, and the other, I can't, I forget specifically what the other two are supposed to be, you know, specifically. Yeah, even Jay Brickell, if I'm saying his last name right, like, he makes a cameo on this. He plays the guy who, you know, when Larry and, and, um, yeah, Larry and Amelia, they make their, they're in one of the, they're in one of the pictures, you know, portraits, and it's like, you know, the portrait is set, like, you know, after the war and such, and, you know, he plays, um, Jay plays, uh, Jay Brickell plays the guy who, you know, he bumps into Larry and, you know, Larry accidentally dropped his phone and like, you know, what is this? And he's, and he plays the guy who, I guess, you know, invents the, the cell phone, etc. something like that, you know? But yeah, okay, so the other characters in this, like, uh, let me see. Um, yeah, John Ber Bernthel, if I'm, God, I hope I'm saying his last name right. Who, you know, best known for playing the Punisher, uh, Marvel, of course. He plays, um, where, okay, I'm look, again, I'm looking at it on the tablet. So, you know, okay, yeah, he's L. Capone, 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 if I'm saying his last name right. And then there's Christopher Guest, who, you know, best known for also being in Princess Bride, you know, alongside with, you know, working alongside with Prince Humperdinck, uh, you know, C Cesar, Yvonne, you know, something like that. And then there's Alan Chapad, Chapad, he's Napoleon. Yep, so he plays Napoleon, uh, you know, so you get the idea. Uh, oh man, I even forgot to mention this even in the first one, because Brad Garrett, because he voices the, uh, the Easter, the Easter Island head, uh, you know, you give me gum gum, dum dum. So, you know, that's him. Um, yeah, even Clint Howard, he makes a cameo in the, in the second one as one of those, like, um, guys at the computers, you know, launch, you know. And, of course, we can't forget about, you know, the infamous cameo scene of Oscar the Grouch and Darth Vader, of course. And, you know, Carol Spinney, 
you know, voicing Oscar, of course, you know, um, and the Jonas Brothers as the the singing angels, you know, the singing baby angels you'd find, a, you know, in a fountain or whatever, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and um, yeah, even George Foreman, he makes an appearance as himself, you know, because I think, like, he's interviewing Larry Daly, Larry, Larry, Larry Daly, because, you know, Larry's appearance, you know, the, his first appearance in this, his opening appearance, is with, you know, advertisement for, like, glow-in-the-dark flashlights, so, yeah, and, like, uh, and even, like, Crystal the monkey also plays another monkey as well, and even, um, Hank Azaria, he has other roles in this, this, you know, aside from playing the pharaoh, the evil pharaoh brother, the evil older feral brother, you know, he uh, voices a couple of characters, like he voices the bobblehead Einstein, and he voices Abraham Lincoln, of course, you know, the memorial of Lincoln, um, yeah, and yeah, there's, and even like Jed, Oct Jed, you know, Jed the cowboy is being, he's held captured by, by, uh, Hank Azaria's character, and like, you know, in a, um, hourglass, you know, you know, of sand, time, and such, and, uh, you know, even Octavius, he comes across a squirrel, because he's making his way into the White House, I guess, to, to get help or something, and comes across the squirrel, and the squirrel, like, I guess, you know, like, becomes his, his noble steed, yeah, pretty much, but everything about Night at the Museum 2 was really good, because with the story, and everything, and, you know, because, and with the main antagonist, so, he was so good in this, even, like, there's one part, remember, because all the treasures he has, and he, like, you know, there's one part where he has the ruby slippers, and I guess he just tosses them. Just, you, you toss the ruby slippers? Oh, give me a break. And there was one cameo in this. God, what's his name? He was in, like, um... He was, uh, he was in, um... He was in the... Alongside with Jay Raquel in the, um... How to Train Your Dragon films, but, you know, I don't see him, but, you know, again, got this on the tablet, so, like, there's a funny scene where, you know, this one guard, like, you know, tells Larry not to touch, you know, where the tablet's supposed to go, don't touch it, it just, you know, go, oh, you're, you're threatening me, and just, you know, Larry grabs him just, you know, with the flashlight and so on, steals his ID or something, you know, his badge or whatever for security, Oh, yeah. And even that, there's an octopus in the film as well. You know, I'm sure you guys remember the octopus, you know, and just dying for water and such, you know. And, like, thanks Larry, hugs him, kind of kisses him with, you know, his, his tentacles. Yeah. And it's really cool because even Sean Levi, you know, the director of the Night at the Museum films, there's one part where, you know, because as they, as they fly back, you know, in, you know, as they use Amelia's plane to fly back to New York to the museum... You know, that, the, I think it's a replica or just something of Amelia's plane. It's, it's real. Out in the streets of New York, up at the museum. It's really cool. And that's according to Sean Levi. Levi. Uh, correct myself. Um, and I almost forgot, you know, because Chris Columbus, he was producer of the, uh, of the three Night the Museum films. That's nice. Um, but yeah, Night the Museum 2, it's really good. And, the ending is really good because, you know, now, like, Night the Museum is opened during the night, you know, and, like, the the figures of the museum, like, I guess, pretend to be highly advanced animatronics or whatever. And I love, uh, there's this one funny scene where, you know, the te these these teenage boys, they think, you know, it's like, this, it's dumb and such. And, you know, when they're up at, when they're up at Rexy and Rexy show, you know, is like, you know, I'll show you this, you know, what's, what's fake or d something like that, you know, roars at them. And even, like, uh, there's one part where Larry sees a woman who, you know, played by Amy Adams as well, who looks exactly like Amelia. And, you know, Larry kind of says to her, you know, you, you remind me of somebody. And I think, you know, her, her response is, I get that a lot. It's just, you know. Um, yeah, and of course, the end credit scene with who I mentioned, uh, uh, Jay Brickell, as I mentioned, you know. I'm on to something as his mom's calling him, you know, because of... Larry's phone, taking it, taking it apart, just, you know, it's pretty funny. Night at the Museum 2, I think is really good, and I give this, uh, how do I write this? Well, okay, 8 out of 10 stars. I, you know, and I'm probably gonna give the third one 8 out of 10 stars as well, you know. But for the second one, 8 out of 10 stars, you guys let me know what you think of Night at the Museum 2, if you enjoy it. For me, I do, of course, and, um, 
until I get to the third one, it's it's I don't I'm gonna save this. What I what I was about what I was about to say, I'm gonna save for my review of the third one. So stay tuned, guys, for my review of Night the Museum 3. Again, eight out of ten stars for Night the Museum 2. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video in the next video slash review video. And again, stay tuned for my review of the third film. Peace out.